So what happens when you cut dietary fat? Do good things happen? No, terrible things happen. So when you cut dietary fat, you've got to make up for the calories, lost calories by doing something, right? Eating something else. Most people increase their intake of carbohydrates, especially grains and to some degree sugars. Well, what happens when you do that? Well, blood sugar starts to go up and higher and blood sugar goes higher than it did before. And when you have high blood sugars, you have high blood insulin. And that's the process when experienced repeatedly that generates insulin resistance. That is a poor response to insulin. And that in turn drives so many other processes, increased cardiovascular risk, increased growth of visceral fat, inflammatory fat in the abdomen, increased cancer risk, increased potential for Alzheimer's dementia. So insulin resistance is a fundamentally bad process and it's generated by repetitive exposure to increased carbohydrates. The visceral fat. As visceral fat grows, it's very inflammatory and also emits inflammatory mediators that export that inflammation to other parts of the body. That's why, for instance, people with visceral fat, that is tummy fat, have more joint pain, more joint inflammation, more risk for breast cancer and other forms of cancer, much greater potential for Alzheimer's dementia because the inflammation that comes from visceral fat. Inflammatory levels go way up when you consume too many carbohydrates for a long list of reasons. But the visceral fat contributes, insulin resistance contributes, change in bowel floor uh, contributes. Bowel floor, bowel floor changes when you increase carbohydrate content. And one of the things that occurs is bacteria and fungi also like to ascend. The sugars essentially invite bacterial species and fungal, fungal species to ascend up from the colon where they're supposed to stay, but they ascend up into the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and stomach. That's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and small intestinal fungal overgrowth. So you get very serious levels of dysbiosis and uh, uh, changes in bowel flora. That in turn leads to endotoxemia or metabolic endotoxemia. That's because those bacteria, when they die, they lose something called lipopolysaccharide from their cell walls and that enters the bloodstream. That situation is much worse when you consume grains because the gliadin protein of wheat and grains also increases intestinal permeability. A little complicated, I know. But so the combination of increased grain consumption, change in bowel flora, climbing of bacteria and fungi up the gastrointestinal tract, that is a massive setup for metabolic endotoxemia. That is increased blood levels of bacterial lipopolysaccharide. That explains why, for instance, when you consume grains, when you increase carbs, you get conditions like fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, increased potential for dementia, uh, restless leg syndrome, and other conditions, even though they're far away from the intestinal tract itself. When you increase consumption of grains and sugars, you provoke formation of small LDL particles. That's the stuff that causes heart disease, not LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is the uh, uh, kindergarten version of how heart disease is caused, but that is what makes money for big pharma. And that's why you hear about only about LDL and total cholesterol. But the real one of the real causes of heart disease is an excess of small LDL particles. And that's because small LDL particles are very adherent to artery tissue. Once they gain entry into the arterial wall, they're much more likely to provoke oxidation and inflammation. Small LDL particles last five to seven days in the bloodstream compared to 24 hours of large LDL particles. So what foods cause small LDL particles? Grains and sugars. Not fats, grains and sugars. An increase in carbohydrate intake via grains and sugars also provokes formation of very low density lipoproteins, VLDL particles. VLDL particles are very rich in triglycerides. This happens because the liver is very good at converting carbohydrates to triglycerides. Now some of those triglycerides stay behind in the liver. That's what gives you fatty liver. Carbohydrates give you fatty liver, not fat. Some of those carbohydrates do gain entry into the bloodstream as VLDL particles. So when you consume carbohydrates, the liver converts those carbohydrates to triglycerides that causes fatty liver, but also causes an increase in VLDL particles. The VLDL particles uh, are a direct cause for heart disease. And they also, the VLDL particles interact with LDL particles and make them small via somewhat complex interaction. So increased carbohydrates is a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease by that route also.
that fatty liver that results from eating carbohydrates also worsens insulin resistance. And you now know that insulin resistance is a major driving factor in numerous diseases. Then there's also when you increase carbohydrate intake, you increase grain intake, you increase your exposure to the gliadin derived opioid peptides. These are the foods that drive appetite. So those opioids bind to the opiate receptor of the human brain and stimulate appetite. Most people increase their calorie intake by 400 to 800 calories per person per day, mostly in carbohydrates. It increases your desire for carbohydrates. And that of course causes more, even more visceral fat growth, insulin resistance, etc. So you can see cutting dietary fat causes an entire tangle of undesirable health phenomena. So nobody, Nobody should be cutting dietary fat. You should be eating all the fat you want, including saturated fat. You should be buying fatty cuts of meat and not trimming the fat off. You should be eating it. When you make bacon, hopefully uncured, don't throw the grease away. Save it to cook. Put it in a glass container, put it in the refrigerator, bring it out to cook, and it makes food taste delicious. Use more butter. Don't limit your olive oil. People say, well, too many calories. You want calories. Calories do not matter once you've banished wheat and grains and sugars from your diet. Fat is satiating. It helps you control. I forgot to mention, when you cut fat also, you also develop gallstones. It's, it doesn't seem like it happens that way, but it does. We now know serial ultrasound studies of people who cut the fat in their diet uh, develop gallstones, sometimes as fast as four weeks. Ultrasounds are performed day zero, 30, 60, 90, etc and gallstones appear with surprising frequency and they can appear as quickly as four weeks. So cutting fat is a useless exercise that does not lead to any health benefits, it only leads to health disasters.